18 minutes after 11 is the time. Very good morning to you if you're just joining us. Obviously, I, I will need a letter off your mum by the end of morning break to explain where the hell you've been all day. You think I do this for my own entertainment? <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, and, and keeping the, the two plates spinning at the moment, we've got the petrol crisis, which I don't know. I, you know me, glass half full. I'm sort of thinking maybe no one's had a crack at this, but I'd like to leave that question hanging. I, I'm moving away from why you panicked yesterday, unless you've got a contribution that we haven't had already, and having a little look at the question of whether or not this is going to come to a natural end when all the people who filled up with petrol that they didn't really need urgently have filled up with petrol that they really didn't need urgently. So the petrol stations that have closed fill up again, a little longer than usual because of the relatively moderate shortage of tanker drivers. And therefore, everybody who hasn't filled up or who genuinely needs to fill up, I don't know. I, I don't know. Or does everyone just keep on panicking indefinitely? I don't know that anyone is qualified to answer that question. If you could answer those questions easily and objectively, we probably wouldn't need politicians. We could have the entire country run like clockwork. Um, so... Then the other bit now, we move on to lorry drivers. Thanks to Tom Ash for articulating the uh, situation so perfectly. From the perspective of being both a journalist and a lorry driver and Polish, which is like the holy trinity of contribution qualifications when you're having a conversation about the government, essentially, I don't want to say begging, but um, hoping, desperately hoping, that 5,000 people from places like Poland will be tempted into this country by the offer of a, of a three-month temporary visa. And there are a lot of reasons not to be optimistic about that, even before we spoke to Tom Ash. Manston Airport, I've got to tell you, in the texts and emails I get from uh, from foreign drivers largely, Manston Airport is writ large in their collective memory. That was, that was a deal-breaker for a lot of people who'd been driving to and from the UK for years. They knew they would be sucking up red tape, they knew they might be sucking up some issues... But that Manston Airport and the provisions that were put in place, they don't care about the reason. You know, the fact that I, I guess uh, some of the usual suspects will try and argue it was all down to the French demanding COVID tests at a time when we were once again Plague Island. You remember Johnson opened up um, or wanted to open up at Christmas, sent entirely the wrong messages to pretty much every corner of the country. So we started 2021 in a, 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 I mean, a, I mean, absolute carnage. It was horrible. How quickly we forget, unless, of course, you lost a loved one, in which case you never will. And the lorry drivers required to test partly as a result of that epic incompetence from Downing Street, causing even bigger backlogs and, and choke points uh, at Dover and Manston Airport becoming a, a kind of almost, almost like a symbol of things to come. Uh, a canary down the coal mine, a harbinger of things to come. Is it harbinger or harbinger? Anyway, it doesn't matter. I've said both now. And, of course, at the time, because everybody was still high on their own supply with regard to the deal negotiated by Lord Frost that Lord Frost is now very keen to disown, most of the people who get paid to keep you up to date with information and to make sure you've got the knowledge that you need to make informed decisions were looking the other way and whistling Dixie. 22 minutes after 11. I'm probably slightly guilty of that myself, actually, as well, although nowhere near as guilty as all of the people who... Um, told you that the country would be going from strength to strength as a direct result of abolishing freedom of movement. So, back to the lorry drivers. There are two cohorts of people here, I think. People who could be tempted back behind the wheel. You've all received letters, I think, of, of Baroness something or other, um, urging you to get back behind the wheel and telling you about all the wonderful opportunities that now exist but didn't exist when you hung up your Yorkie. Uh, and your CB radio, just to indulge in some very anachronistic, lazy and entirely outdated uh, stereotypes. Uh, so that's cohort number one. Cohort number two, and I'm lucky to have so many people in this cohort listening to me. At least I hope you still do. I know you did when you were driving the, the, the motorways, the highways and byways of these islands. Probably a lot of those people have gone home now. But people who are listening out overseas, perhaps, drivers... Will you be tempted? Does the idea of a three-month special visa when every other country in the European Union still offers you equal rights to everybody else in those countries? I'm putting words in your mouth. I mean, what would swing it for you? What would make you think, yeah, do you know what? I am going to sleep in my cab for the next three months and run the risk of being stranded in the UK again at Christmas because, you know, you know they're better than us, these Brits. 
that I know my place. And as a, as a, as a lowly pole, I, I, I'm fully aware of the fact that people like Jacob Rees-Mogg are my betters by birth. And the least I can do to keep that distinction in place is spend three months of my life sleeping in my cab, driving uh, dodgy old roads, uh, parking up in places where I'm either not welcome or treated like, should we say, scum? <laughs> or should we save that for the next hour? Um, and then I'll be slung out again on Christmas Eve, potentially. 24 minutes after 11 is the time. But I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth. So I want the, the people who... Could you be tempted back? 03456060973. And rather less fertile ground, I imagine, just by dint of geography. Could you be tempted back to Blighty? Or could you be tempted to drive in the UK? And then we'll look at the details, which include the qualifications, the likelihood, and, and the insurance ramifications and repercussions and as ever on this program if this is your world that i'm discussing if this is your area either past or present or potentially of course future then you can ring in and say whatever you want if you think it'll be helpful to the rest of us because knowledge is power Eleven twenty-four is the time james is in windsor james what made you pick up the phone hello yes well i'm an ex-driver i used to drive about eight years ago okay um and then it was working hours. It was um, the the having to be where you got to be at a certain time that drove me out of the business. And I... Um, well, we all have to be somewhere at a certain time. I, I appreciate you you're being a bit more stringent Look at that. the M25 today. Yeah. You, you have people on the phone. Why aren't you there? Oh, I see when what you mean. In traffic. And that is a constant. You know? That's not confined to the days when Insulate Britain are strutting their funky yeah. stuff all over it the world. Yeah. It could a be lot, anything. A lot of the coverage missed that, didn't it? I mean, you, you give up lorry driving because the traffic di- traffic jams are so unendemic. And but then, it's not just the traffic jams. Why else? You know, you could be st- sat in that traffic jam. How do you go to the toilet? How do you. How do well, you I know that. You have to use life? a bottle. You know, it is a problem. Yes. You know, and it's a problem that you have to live with when you're sat in a cab all day. And you're sat in there all day. Yes. And did you, you know, go home at home. night? Did you go home at night? Uh, well, and this, this is the thing. You drive for hours is the thing that donates whether you get home at night. Yes. If you run out of driver's hours, you don't. You know, you can't. What do you do instead? Well, you, you have to find somewhere to park no, not, not, the best of it. Not, not that. Flipping hands. I thought you might say tie a knot in it, James. I meant, what do you, <laughs> what, what do, you do instead now? Are you, are you retired, semi-retired, or are you doing something else? I used to be um, a, a driver minibus um, yeah. right next to my house. The job was right next to my house. Regular hours. Yes. Um, and then got made redundant over this. And now I'm retired. And I you're, don't and do nothing. You're keeping, the wolf from, you're, you're keeping the wolf from the door with your army pension, and it would take... <sighs> well, they're not going to be able to fix the things you've just the described, are they? They're not going to be able to fix the things you've just described. Well, it's not the government's fault. You, 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 you can blame the government, but it isn't their fault. The fault is down to big corporations that tender out their business. Nah, you know don't that's not keep quite. It with it. The fault is it down. Is, nah, the fault is down to 40 years of attacks upon trade unions, mate, and the fact that no worker in this country has got any rights or respects left, but I don't know that the country's ready well, yeah, to have there, that there conversation. Is that, there's that aspect as well. I do agree with you. Yeah. But a lot of it is... Chicken um, BP. Mm. It all really started with BP, didn't it? I don't know. Oh, this, 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 this saga did, yes. This episode did. Well, I'm... tell me. Mm. To me, BP is a blue chip company. Yeah. It is the emblem of Britain, even. You know, it is... well, it's not anymore, but I know what you mean. Um, you know what I mean. Of course though. I do, it, it, yes. BP, it is the thing. But why, why would a company with multi million pound CEOs. I know. I knew, no, I knew where you were going with that. I was googling it to try and get ahead of you. Guess what his name is? <laughs> oh, I shouldn't no, I don't laugh. Know. But these CEOs are supposed to. He's only on one point seven million. He's only on one point seven million a year. Yeah, they're supposed to be ahead of the game. Yes. 
Well, how do you run out of drivers if you're ahead of the game? Well, I you think don't. part it's not for me to defend them, but if the people in charge of the country are describing warnings that there is going to be a shortage of drivers as scaremongering or project fear or remoning, and I don't care how you voted in the referendum, but that is a defence that I would use if I was Bernard Looney, the CEO of BP. No, but you knew you knew that we were uh, that something was going to happen. Yeah, but I'm I'm Bernard uh, Bernard Looney, the CEO of BP, probably thought this government, there's no earthly way they can let all of this stuff happen because they swore blind it wouldn't. Yeah, I kind of agree with you, but but I don't agree with the fact that they tender it out. By tendering out their business and not keeping all their drivers within the company, they're getting rid of the pensions that they have to pay. Of course they are. Um, so... No, of course they are. They're, 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 they're shaving everything. Centric has shut down 70% of the gas storage with the government's permission, despite warnings that it was an incredibly short-termist decision to take, but, you know, it got waved through. I think that was Theresa May's watch. It wasn't even the current crowd. But that that is all about... I mean, crikey, in the days before COVID and the days before Brexit, this show was punctuated by regular reminders that all of these decisions are taken to deliver dividends and profits to people who don't go out and drive for a living, who don't work for a living, who don't even sit behind a microphone burbling for a living. They just move money from one place to another in the hope of watching it grow faster. And we're enthralled to them. More so in the countries, of course, that still treat dodgy, secretly funded think tanks as honest brokers and authorities on difficult subjects than, than countries that don't. Most obviously are the Northern European countries, Scandinavian countries in particular. Half past 11 is the time, James, so you aren't, you, he's not getting up anytime soon, not until the services are better, the conditions are better, the respect is better. All of the things that historically the trade union movement would have delivered and defended have, have gone out of the window. But don't forget, next time there is any industrial action by any trade union whatsoever, don't forget whose side you're on. Yep, Rupert Murdoch's. It's half past 11. Holly Harris is here with you headlines. 11.34 is the time. Um, they're just sort of looking at these numbers. In the mail, culled from Transport Intelligence, Bloomberg and the Road Haulage Association, and wondering how we could examine what they really mean. I thought that Thomas was fascinating on the question of whether or not the reported shortages in other countries, which have become a fig leaf, obviously. I, I listen, you probably aren't ready to believe me yet when I tell you this, but I wish we could have these conversations away from the lens of Brexit. Because I think it it holds us back. Some people on one side of the argument are possibly too keen to feel vindicated and to to say, I told you so. And some people on the other argument are still too desperate to avoid any acknowledgement that the people that they spent quite a long time being very rude to, um, to put it mildly, were right all along. So... Uh, it, it, it is why I like Thomas's article so much. There's lots of other reasons there. Everything from the migrant situation in Calais, the camps in Calais, right through to, to COVID, through to all sorts of other issues. And, and I think the most recurring theme from experienced drivers is the fact that the terms and conditions here, particularly the conditions, are worse than they are in many other countries. So if you have the luxury of choice, even under free movement, you you, you wouldn't really put a shift in here if you could avoid it. Of course, if it was part of a broader journey, if you were doing cabotage and and, and driving into several countries, then that decision becomes a lot easier. But I don't really think, and and what I mean when I say that I wish we could have the conversation away from that that lens, is that we are, and and I'm sure I'm guilty of this subconsciously, I try not to be, but nobody's perfect. We're, We're still we're still under the banner of leave and remain. And yet, you can't have the conversation without referencing European Union membership because ending it is clearly a large part, if not the main part, of many of the problems that we're currently facing. I mean, in the area of labour shortages, I'd hope that that was an unprovocative comment. I'd hope that was something we could probably all agree on, even if you're still clinging to the idea that we can, quote, train our own or um, that, that things are just as bad elsewhere. But I'm not that interested in these numbers, oddly. Denmark, if you if you care, has 2,500 HGV driver shortages. Germany has between 45 and 60,000. Uh, Poland has even more than us. And that's why I wonder what these numbers really mean, because unless Poland is seeing food not reaching supermarkets and petrol not reaching petrol stations, then that statistic there 
is clearly designed to distract from the reality in the UK. It gives people, and, and I wish I could, I wish I'd found years ago, the antidote to this psychological desire to be given something, even if you kind of know it's not true, it feels powerful enough to shout in response to reality. So, you, you, you know, you say, well, of course, treating these people really badly, making them unwelcome and telling them to sod off back to where they came from has had a deleterious effect upon the desirability of the United Kingdom as a destination for foreign workers. Of course it has. Rather than admit that, because it's your fault, you're going to really take up with alacrity the invitation to start shouting about how it's happening in lots of other places as well, and government are doing it which makes it impossible for us not to follow, for some of us not to follow. So government are doing it as well. Trying to blame the current crisis on the Road Haulage Association yesterday in one newspaper, I think it was the Mail on Sunday, and this thing today about the... So can we get a handle on that, do you think? If you're in Poland, have you got shortages anywhere? What, what, what do you think when you see the scenes from the UK, of, of these ludicrous queues outside petrol stations, do you think there but for the grace of God go we? Any minute now, that's going to happen here because we've got shortages as well. Or or is this a little bit of sleight of hand by media or a, a reflection of a constant status quo that we have uniquely and, uh, well, very lonely, in a very lonely way, we have taken a bad situation and make it worse and all of the people responsible for making it was are now reporting the bad situations elsewhere that haven't been made. Do you see what I... I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, but also, what would it take to tempt you either back behind the wheel or to Britain? 0345 6060973. Oh, Do you think this offer, these 3,000, 5,000 visas are, are going to work? And, and just by way of... I think the last time I mentioned the B word for a bit, do you remember Paul Kelly, who we met on Friday, the turkey farmer, who was absolutely adamant about what had caused the collapse in labour supply for, for his farm and, and many, many others, explaining why we'll go back to, as we did 30-odd years ago, relying upon French turkeys for our Christmas dinners. Um, he was interviewed by the BBC after he appeared on this programme. And guess which word, beginning with B, wasn't mentioned once in their written-up report on the BBC website? So Paul Kelly, absolutely adamant what the main cause of his current problems was. Somehow, by the time... And I, I don't like criticising the BBC, because I think, in the words of Joni Mitchell, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. But I, found, I read it twice. I might read it again, actually, just to triple check. But it didn't seem to mention the B word once, despite the fact that when we spoke to him, which is probably where they got the idea to interview him in the first place, he was absolutely crystal clear about what the major cause of his current problems was. Strange times, isn't it? Magic's in Queen's Park. Magic, what have you got? Hi. Uh, hi, James. Uh, you're my favourite presenter. Uh, right I'm too. a first-time well, Hang on, Sheila, Sheila's, Sheila's, Sheila's back today, so we're neck and neck, I hope. But uh, apart from right. that, very wise choice. Carry on. Right. Uh, I just want to say why uh, things are happening, they are happening. Once Brexit happened, all of the people who were, let's say, from Central Europe and East, they couldn't get a passport for them kids. Basically, they get a... Or, they get a passport on the the first one. Mm. They apply for the second one. They were t they were told that the passport was given to them by a mistake, really? and that they couldn't get. Yes, that's quite well known in the community. Okay, and uh, lots of people they couldn't get the passport for them kids. You know, as a second passport or third, and they decided they don't they want to go. They had enough. They don't want them kids to be a second class citizen and uh, pay for the passport or whatever else. Yeah. Yeah, so, so this is th this isn't my field of expertise, but you're 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 living uh, it. This I, is I'm right to remain. And I've been I've been around for twenty one years. I know how things are. Okay. Secondly, I've got the HGV license. Have you? I never use it because I've been a I've been a builder and a plumber. Okay. And uh, this job is not fruitful for me. It doesn't look like I want to go to it and I want to throw everything and became lorry driver. Mm. Uh, the wages is not great. The conditions is horrible. And uh, how? You know what sort of a career you've got when you've got a track where well, basically uh, track less well. Uh, yeah, but it's not. Is, is, is it a measurably worse offer than it was two years ago? Oh, of course it is. Sorry, stupid question. It is. Yeah, it no, is because of the visa passport freedom. Who's, go, who's go? You tell me who is going to think to go to Britain for temporary visa for three months to become a lorry driver? Is it that fruitful? Is it that? Right, nice they job? might bump into someone like. John Redwood on their travels. You can't do that in Poland. They might get to meet Jacob Rees-Mogg or, or Ian Duncan Smith. Would that attract it? Well, no? Uh, 
I, I don't think, you know, oh. if there is a little bit of a dignity in a top dog behavior, he will go and he will become himself a lorry driver. Mm. Th- that will be the best gift he could well, give be careful offer to what, the country. Be careful what you wish for. If his lorry driving is anything like the, the supermarket trolley that Dominic Cummings describes, it, it, it could cause a hell of a lot more harm than good. W- would anything tempt you back behind them? What about 50 quid an hour? Well, if there's a 50 quid an hour, I'm throwing my business right now and I became a lorry driver. Yeah. If, if there is a, is, a, is there better money what I'm earning right now, I will I will basically give up and I will do what I'm told. But uh, right now the job isn't that fruitful. People will not turn around. And uh, what is three or five thousand three or five thousand lorry five drivers thousand. will change when the shortage is eighty or hundred thousand? Yeah. Um, How is that going to change anything? You tell me. I, so they can get the, they can get army to support it. They should. There were 4,000, you'll remember this, because you probably had mates who were there, but on Christmas Eve last year, there were 4,000 trucks stuck. That was the capacity at Manston Airport, and it, it reached, it was full. There were 4,000 people struck, stuck at Manston Airport last Christmas Eve. So the numbers are, they sound a bit small, don't they? What about the this? Here you go, John Redwood, who I think you probably underestimate his role as a tourist attraction for potential... Uh, lorry drivers coming here from Poland. I, I would have thought the opportunity of meeting John Redwood in the flesh would, would, would prompt many people to cross oceans. He says online companies have attracted lots of extra drivers to do parcel van deliveries. HGV employers need to learn from how they did it. So uh, there you go. That's perhaps the answer. Let, Magic. Me, let me tell you, James, one thing. I've got a relative in Poland. He is working for two years in Germany. His employer pay him to go for holiday to Poland to do AGV licenses. He paid for the holiday, he paid for the AGV licenses, and he basically is back to work. He's probably 22 or 25, and he's got paid for the holiday, and he's been paid for the cars. Can you see that happening here when uh, we start with the paperwork, and everything, whatever they do, is a mistake by mistake, and uh, we pay in higher prices, and uh, there is a more humiliation around than ever before. People are rolling their eyes. Every house I enter, you know, every single day, there's a conversation. Who is going to pay for Boris? Yeah. How um, many years the kids are going to pay? How, lo- how long? Yeah, but what, co- ah, what colour is your passport, Magic? My, ca- my passport? Yes. My passport is a colour of 21 experience, pay for myself, not live on a benefit, and uh, real de- live the real life, not the buffoon, who doesn't really touch of a, right, of a did, reality. That didn't go well. Let me, what else have we got? World. Um, let me think something else. Sovereignty, eh? Hey, I bet Sovereignty? So- no, yeah. I'm thinking of the fish which is rotten and those fishes which they were basically in the central London driving. And when you said M20, I was thinking of those people who are volunteered to clean up the mess after the 4,000 lorries stuck in the traffic. I'm thinking particularly about that one man which there's a special place in heaven for him. <laughs> Magic, many thanks indeed. Magic by name, magic by nature. 11.45 is the time. James, I've just spoken to my brother. He told me he doesn't understand what people in the UK are talking about. There are no problems of any sort noted in the delivery chain of any industries. There is a need for drivers, as Polish companies have taken on so much of the EU market, but whatever they're saying in the UK that the EU has problems simply isn't translating into any shortages being experienced on the ground. Don't tell me what I want to hear. If you can chat, I know you're not. You're telling me what you're being told by your brother. I certainly don't... Well, I can't imagine... Well, anyway, what do I know? You tell me. You're in these countries that have also got shortages that are being fed by the Daily Mail to its readers so that they can shout, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, I just wonder whether the people in the countries that are being yeah butted recognise what's being described by the yeah butters. It's 11.46. It's 10 to 12 already. Um, HGVs. Just trying to work out what I'd need to be offered in order to hang up my headphones. Don't, I'm only just speculating. Don't have a panic attack. It's all right. I'm not planning on hanging out my headphones anytime soon. But where does it end? I honestly don't know. And I think the days of thinking that the grown-ups must somehow know what they're doing are probably over for a while, aren't they? At least with this this lot of grown-ups. If, if coronavirus hasn't proved that point beyond all reasonable doubt, then all of these weird and avoidable crises and catastrophes probably have. Let's go to Poland now. Peter is in Warsaw. Peter, what can you tell us? Oh, good morning. First time caller. Actually, Welcome. second time caller to LBC, but the first time with you. Who did you... Uh... Who, who popped your cherry? Uh, 
I don't remember now. It was like a two years ago. <laughs> well, you'll remember this one, I hope, Peter. What would you like to say? <laughs> Uh, I would like to say that I'm actually in Poland and uh, just went to the, to the shop and they are full of uh, the, their stock up. Everything, the, there's no problem with the fuel, there's no problem with the uh, like a special salad that you can buy only in the shops. Yes. Uh, but uh, like a, two, a, week, a week ago, I was in London and I had a problem with uh, buying special salad in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Sainsbury or any other shop. I still had the problems. Well, what and, about the pe- uh, petrol stations? I think you mentioned fuel petrol stations. All right, are they at the moment? They are ready, and they are really doing fine. So he- no fuel. here's the thing, and, and I don't know that you will be able to answer this question, but we, we ha- I have it today in Britain's best-selling newspaper that there are even more HGV driver shortages in Poland than there are in the United Kingdom. We're, we're having a, a, a collective national meltdown about petrol shortages, and although I some know. people are lucky enough not to have endured it or witnessed it yet, we're also seeing some fairly major problems in the, in the supply chain of food and building materials and various other things. W- why, I mean, d- does the Polish media ever report on HGV driver shortages? Uh, no, this is not. There is no issue like that. But we have a report about the English drivers uh, shortages. Yeah, there it is. Then, so and, it's dog bites uh, man, isn't it? Yeah, actually, really, the, the, there is no issue. There is there is no issue. Last time we had the issue, we were in a communist country God, thirty God. years ago. Yeah, all right, don't rub it in. So th- there is a there is a bit of a B word thing here in that we we speak, and you're only one Polish person. You can't speak for the entire country. Although I've got a couple of others in my inbox, we we, we speak to people in Poland, and they say it's raining, and then we speak to people <laughs> like Grant Shapps or John Redwood or Ian Duncan Smith in England, and they say, it's definitely not raining in Poland, and we're supposed to believe them, not you. It's a really nice weather up here. (laughs) Uh, And actually... It's not raining in Poland. (laughs) It's really nice weather over there, but you you had this B word all over it, and uh, and it's not true, and it's not true. It's a funny old world, isn't it? Well, I mean, it, let us know. Do get back in touch. If, if I mean, I'm not being glib, if, if, if somebody explains to you why the 124,000 HGV driver vacancies in Poland are actually a little bit more acute and a little bit more apparent than you have currently encountered, because every time I mention problems in this country, I'll get a bunch of texts and emails off people saying, well, I haven't seen any of this, therefore it doesn't exist. Maybe you're just lucky. You know, maybe there are loads of petrol stations in Poland that are closed. It's just that uh, the media hasn't noticed yet. Or maybe they're doing what we should have done and they're not reporting it in order to avoid panic buying. And is it possible to die of facetiousness? Because if it is, I must be taking my life in my hands at this point in proceedings. Peter, many thanks. Joe's in Bexley Heath. Joe, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Hello, Joe. Um, I was driving HDVs when I left the army from 23 to 45. You've got the ADR. Your You've got the ADR licence then, have you, as well? I haven't got the ADR, oh, no. OK. But... When you get to 45, you have to reapply. Do I you? didn't. I'm now in a job now where I work a weekdays, a weeknights, and it's a killer. It's 22 grand. My wife is tapping the table every night saying, why don't you get your licence back? Yeah. She's lost her job. I could really do with doubling my money. And believe me, it's only what HGV drivers deserve, OK? Yes. Now, the problem is, is that what, what do I do? I've got a, count, I've got a job. Yeah. I've got 22 grand a year. I've got a pension if I carry on. I jump ship, get my HGV license back, which is just sending off a form, yeah. go to work, and in 12 months' time, it all sorts itself out. Other drivers come in, and then they want to start taking the wages down. Then I've done myself. The grass is greener on the other side, but for a limited amount of time. It's a good point. It's, not it's a good calculation. Why, why, why is your salary... What do you do at the moment, if you don't mind me asking? I'm a CCTV operator. Okay, and and okay. who drove that down, or is that? I mean, are you? It's just it's just just the pay that it is. I mean, it's it's just the pay that it is. But it's a regular job, and I'm thankful for it. Here's but the bit I'm I don't get. I, no, listen, your your calculation is 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 acute, and I, and I I completely understand where you're coming from. If it was me. I don't know what I'd do, because you've got solids there, haven't you? You've got security, and you've got, as you say, a pension on the horizon, and, and nights are tough, but driving a truck is probably even tougher, isn't it, in many ways? But what, yeah, the bit is. I don't get, and this is where, again, possibly we were like Poland before, is that, is that we had shortages 
before all of the European Union drivers left. And yet, not, we, we had shortages, but wages were being driven down at the same time. I, I, I'm probably been a bit thick, and I'm not disputing your analysis, because clearly the more people there are applying for a job, the lower the boss can get away with paying. But how could there have been shortages and wages being driven down by oversupply? Do you see what I mean? I just can't join in those all, dots yet. James, yeah. in all the years that I did it, there was never, there was very, very, did I ever see that there were shortages on HGV drivers. It's only because of COVID, because of coming out of the EU, that it suddenly crept up. But you've got all these great big companies, supermarkets and everything, that earn millions and millions of pounds in profits yet they want to pay the wages, the driver's wages, they want to get them for as low as they can. Don't and think I'm can having a me, go. Don't, have, don't think I'm having a go, because I'm not. Go on. But w w w w w when I say the words trade unions, what happens in your head? Not really a fan of trade unions, to tell you the truth, James. Oh, it save us all, mate. I mean, that but is... Well, who I do you think, who do you think historically makes sure that all of the things you've just rightly condemned are less likely to happen? Yeah, trade unions. Yeah. I totally agree with what you're saying, James. But the problem is for me yeah. is that there is no guarantees in this world. Of course. If, if somebody was to come, if the government was going to come ahead and say, right, this is what a driver should minimum get, then people will feel more secure. But well, that's the what moment, the union will do. That's what, with collective bargaining, I mean, it's going to take a generation to rebuild it. And I don't see the current Labour party trying to start the process anytime soon so that that's never going to happen on a personal level and and i feel for you i really do what happens when you explain this to your wife because you can see where she's coming from as well she thinks you could be on 80 grand by tea time right yeah i'm not i'm not living in cloud cuckoo land i'd be happy with 30 grand james would well then, then i think fair, you'd be all right if you really would be a fair price I'd... but it, it's it won't stand that's what i'm saying right. and in the current climate yeah, right. they should just get the army in to cover they do it with the ambulances. They've got HGV drivers in the army that are sitting around on their hands. Get them out, get this sorted, and then start paying HGV drivers oh, what they deserve, a fair price for a fair day's work. It's not easy driving a 40-ton lorry around London and I, the home county. And I days. think, actually, the longer this goes on, and, and this is going to sound like a cheeky point directed not at you but at some other people, the longer this goes on, the, the more confident we can be that we won't be... Uh, uh, undercutting wages by tempting people over from other countries because we're going to be a, a, a worse off economy than they are. So that, that James, problem could disappear over the horizon sometime soon I'll as well. Call you, James, I'm staying where I am. I don't want to, but I'm going to right. because I'm airing on the side of caution. And in 12 yeah. months' time, we'll see where we are. Yeah, good point. All right, well, good luck. I, I, seriously, uh, it's a tough decision that you make. It was interesting with Thomas earlier. I don't know how much of it you heard where he, his calculation was, well, I could make more money, do quite a lot more money doing that job, but my current terms and conditions um, are preferable. So, you know, for some of us, the bottom line, the paycheck is the only consideration when we're looking at our livelihoods. And for some of us, it's, it's just one of the considerations, not even the biggest in some cases, but we're all different. It's 12 noon.